Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be showing you how to install the Demco hydraulic disc brake actuator with the reverse electric lockout. Uh, but before we get to that, why don't we just take a minute, check this out, and make sure it'll work for you. So this is going to be a good uh, upgrade or replacement uh, for a lot of people. And what this is going to allow you to do is operate the disc brakes on your, on your trailer. So whether you already have a setup like that, and maybe this got damaged or something and you need a new one, this will work out for you. Or uh, in many cases, like ours today, we're actually adding um, disc brakes to our trailer. And so obviously we need a way to operate those. And that's where this is gonna come into play. This will fill up with uh, brake fluid. And being that it is a surge brake type actuator, what happens whenever you're towing uh, you know, your trailer, in our case, it's a boat, uh, pretty popular setup for boats, but whenever you hit the brakes, the trailer, the weight of the trailer is going to want to shift forward, and when that happens, it's going to activate uh, our, uh, a cylinder in here, essentially, and send fluid back to the brakes, to the disc brakes on the trailer, and that's how it's going to how it's going to slow everything down. Now, with that said, this particular one is only designed for trailers with disc brakes, so keep that in mind. A lot of times the disc brakes uh, require a little bit higher pressures than say your uh, drum brake. And so that's what this one is gonna, is gonna give us, that way everything works properly. This particular setup is also gonna have what's called an electric uh, reverse lockout. And so what that means, um, whenever you put your vehicle, your tow vehicle in reverse, the brakes on your trailer are not gonna be applied because without that uh, feature, I guess you could say, Whenever you try to back up, the brakes are gonna be applied and that's uh, not something you always want, right? Especially the boat uh, when you're uh, getting ready to launch it or back down the ramp. Um, there's ones that have that feature, they're just not electric, so you'd have to get out here and usually put a pen in or something along those lines, kind of a pain. A lot of times you'll end up forgetting to do that and then you know cause some issues there. This one though, you wire it up in a way that as soon as you put your truck in reverse, that's it. You don't have to worry about anything. You know it's not going to uh, activate your brakes. Uh, in order to accomplish that though and for it to work, your trailer is going to have to have a five-way flat wire. So essentially this is just a standard four-way, you know, with your, uh, uh, your, your standard signals, your tail lights, brake lights, uh, turn signals. But you get this additional one, this blue wire here, and that's for the reverse light. So, um, you know, if your truck has a seven-way, you plug the seven way in and there's an, a seven way adapter. You plug it in and then it turns it into this. You can plug that right in and that's how you're gonna get the reverse light signal uh, back here. This unit is gonna work with trailers that have a straight tongue that is three inches wide. And so essentially you'll cut off the old, old stuff you got or unbolt it, whatever. And then this will drop on and, and bolt into place. You will have to get your own nuts and bolts to secure everything, but not a huge deal. Uh, and it is going to have a two inch coupler. So, um, you know, whenever you put this onto your ball mount, you want to make sure that your ball is a two inch ball. So pretty standard, uh, pretty standard stuff there. I am a fan of these couplers. Uh, they offer these couplers just plain, you know, on, on setups like this. They're um, easy latch and they're pretty cool actually. So you don't ha even have to mess with this when you go to hook up to your to your ball or to your towed vehicle, you just back up and lower this right down on and it kind of clicks it into place automatically. Granted, whenever you're ready to unhook, you will have to open up the latch, but you know, it's uh, pretty convenient there. The latch mechanism, one uh, thing that uh, I wasn't too crazy about at first, is this is actually plastic. And I'm thinking, you know, man, that's gonna break over time. There's, there's no doubt about it. And, you know everything else but we actually had uh, Dave here in the shop uh, quite some time ago uh, beat on this with a hammer and these are no joke it did not break and I mean he whacked it uh, quite a few times uh, really hard and it left a couple little nicks in there but it never broke so uh, I was proven wrong you know I'm, I'm actually uh, pretty impressed with uh, the coupler mechanism here the uh, weight ratings for this, it's gonna be 7,000 pounds for your maximum gross trailer weight rating. So obviously how much everything weighs uh, on your trailer and the trailer uh, itself. And 
the maximum gross tongue weight rating is going to be 700 pounds. So don't exceed um, those capacities there. This cable here, this is for the, uh, in the case of an unlikely disconnect, what will happen is this will pull the actuator in here and send brake fluid back to the brakes and try to slow everything down. So uh, safety feature there. So make sure you always have this hooked up to your uh, tow vehicle's safety chain openings. Uh, with that said though, I mean, that's really about it. You know, there isn't much to these. Um, there are a handful of different options out there. Um, like I said, regardless, I would, I would highly consider the electric reverse lockout. It just makes, it just simplifies things, you know, and, and one less thing to have to worry about. And for someone that are, are, or that does plan on converting your trailer to a disc brake setup like we did here today, uh, we carry a lot of that stuff. So for example, we have the uh, brake line kit, which will plug into our uh, actuator here. And this will run all the way to the back where we have our disc brakes. That brake line will run all the way back here to our discs. Uh, and what we have set up here today is the Kodiak disc brake kit. Um, and we're using the eTrailer.com uh, bearing package. Now keep in mind, you know, there's a bunch of kits available that are just for different size axles and, you know, some of the, the rotors are bigger and everything else. So uh, make sure to see the website and choose the appropriate package for your particular trailer. Other than that, at the end of the day, a nice setup. I'm pretty impressed with it actually. Uh, it's zinc plated, so it's gonna hold up to the elements. And um, it actually went together pretty easy too, as far as the installation goes. Now, uh, keep in mind, everyone's setup might be a little bit different, but uh, we'll go ahead and do that together now. And hopefully it'll at least get you going in the right direction. To begin our installation, uh, first thing I wanna mention is every setup's probably gonna be a little bit different, but this will at least give you the general idea on, on how to do this. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, first things first, you want to remove your old coupler assembly, right? Uh, whether it's bolted on, uh, you know, remove the bolts and the hardware. Uh, if it's welded on, uh, you can use a, a grinder to grind the welds. And if you have an air chisel or an air hammer, I find those work pretty good to kind of work everything free. If not, kind of just have to do it the old fashioned way, you know, keep grinding and, and beat it off, get it removed. Uh, make sure everything's flat and smooth and whatnot. Uh, and throw a coat of paint on it just to keep that bare metal protected if that's your case. And then also the end here, you wanna make sure that this is true. Uh, so make sure that's square, that way everything will sit on here uh, flush. Now we're ready to actually grab our coupler and we're just gonna set this on the tongue of our trailer. Make sure it's pushed all the way back and pushed all the way down. Obviously it's sitting on there good. And we're gonna have three attachment points that are holding it on. Um, so what you can do is mark those holes, right? I just took a, uh, a pick and just kind of scratch the openings. You can use a, a marker, pencil, whatever you got to uh, mark them out. And obviously do this on both sides of our uh, trailer frame here. Then we can get that out of the way. And what I like to do is drill one hole. We'll get a nut and a bolt in there just to kind of keep it steady and then do the rest of them. Since we're gonna use half inch bolts to secure our coupler, I'm gonna use a half inch uh, drill bit here. So now that I got that, just that one hole drilled out, put the coupler on it, and now we can get it bolted in place. That way it'll stay tight, uh, you know, while we drill the rest of them, just makes it a little easier. The hardware combo I'm gonna use for this bottom hole is just a half inch bolt and a flat washer. It is super close to this uh, piece here. So I took a washer, ground it down a little bit and you will have to source your own hardware and yours might differ from mine and just, you know, every setup's a little different, but got that in. On the back side where it goes into the frame, I'm just gonna put on a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. So what I'm doing now, I'm just gonna snug this bolt down uh, just to kind of hold everything tight. And then I'm gonna do the same thing in the same location, just over on the other side of her coupler here. So I got our other holes drilled out and just looking up into the frame, it's gonna be pretty hard to get a wrench and whatnot 
uh, on this attachment point. Uh, if you just use a regular nut and a bolt, it can be done, but I really don't feel like fighting it. So what I'm gonna do is use a carriage bolt and a spacer block. And to get that in to the frame, I'm gonna use a pull wire. You put the coiled end in, push it out. So it'll come out of our frame of our trailer. And then I'm just gonna thread this on. And this will actually feed up into the frame. And I can pull out on it. And that spacer block will prevent this from spinning. Because it's it'll spin a little bit, but it's actually hitting the other side there, that bolt, so it'll prevent it from uh, spinning around. Then I'm going to take a flat washer and a nylon lock nut and tighten it down. And finally I got our last bolt started. Uh, I just used the same combo as our middle one here. Just a regular bolt, flat washer, flat washer on the inside, nylon lock nut. And with all these uh, snug down, you can come back with a torque wrench and torque them all down to the bolt manufacturer's recommendations. With this all bolted down, we can hook up the wiring coming out of it. So there will be two wires. Uh, one of them will be ground, the other one will go to the reverse light signal. Doesn't matter which wire, you know, either end as long as we're eventually both hooked up. So uh, I kind of got this one ready, crimped on a buck connector, and I'll just use that one for our reverse light uh, wire coming from our five-way wiring. It's usually blue. So to hook these up, strip back the insulation, give it a good twist, put that bare end, end of the wire in there, and crimp it down and since this is a heat shrink type connector I'm gonna grab my heat source real quick and seal up the ends for our uh, the other wire here I guess that's gonna be a ground I need to hook up the ground for our new five-way wiring anyway, so I just twisted them together and they'll just share ground, kind of reduce uh, or eliminate one extra unnecessary connection, if that makes sense. So twist them together. Uh, my ring terminal isn't a heat shrink style, so I have a piece of tubing here, heat shrink tubing that I'm going to use. So I'll slide that on first, followed by our ring terminal. Current bit down. Slide my tubing over the top. And once I heat shrink this, we can ground it to the frame. To ground this, uh, I just have a self tapping screw. Where to go to our frame and just get it secured. Now we're able to hook our actual brake line up to the uh, part there on our coupler. So pretty simple stuff here. We're just gonna take our brake line, line it up, and thread it in. So we'll get it started by hand, as tight as we can. And in our case, our line size fitting there is three-eighths of an inch. Uh, I do suggest using a socket like this. Uh, it's a line wrench. You just get a, get a better bite on it with these fittings being brass. Sometimes they can get soft. If you use a regular type box wrench, you could potentially round those off. So uh, that prevents it. And when you get too carried away here, we'll snug this down. To bleed your trailer's brakes, 
Uh, you're going to take the appropriate brake fluid, fill it up in the reservoir up here, and then there's a cover uh, ours has that you can just pop off. And what I'm going to do is just take a extension and a socket, and put it over this. I'm not going to turn the, the bolt or anything. You're just going to push in slowly and out slowly, kind of let it come back. You do that several times. You'll feel like it hard, you know, and you want to check every now and again in your reservoir to make sure you don't want to let this run dry or else you're going to suck more air into it. So, you know, if you got to top it off, then do that and do this several times. And once we feel, you know, like fluid's actually going into the lines and we got good resistance, we're going to go to the back and uh, open up our bleeder, our, our bleeder screws to uh, let all the air out. So when you're getting the air out of the lines, you're going to need two people to do this, right? So one person will be up here and what they'll do is they'll push us in, you know, all the way in and hold it there. And while they're holding it, you can open up the bleeder screw, let the air out. Uh, you know, some fluid will come out with it too, usually. And, you know, for a couple seconds, then tighten the screw back down, tighten the bleeder screw back down. And then the person up here will let this back out and then continue to pump it several times. And you do that over and over again until you, um, uh, you know, get all the air out of lines. I want to say if you have a tandem axle trailer, you want to make sure to start with the brakes in the back first. So furthest away from this and then work your way up. So what you're going to do, you don't have to take a clear hose and put it over this, but I like to. You can kind of see the fluid and see the air a little bit better. But I'm going to just push it over the top. I'm going to take a wrench and I'm going to have... Uh, my buddy up front there, hold the, hold it down, holding. So while he's holding it, you're going to crack this open a little bit. And just like I thought with this one, nothing but air came out. So we'll pump it up, uh, pump it up again, and just continue to do that over and over until we have a steady stream of fluid coming out. We don't want to see any, we don't really want to see it spitting out or, you know, air bubbles in it or anything like that. Hold it. And there I go and pump. So we're cracking this open. We're getting somewhat close. You see the stream of fluid and then a couple little air pockets coming out of there. If we see any little air pockets like that at all, we know we need to continue to uh, keep bleeding. All right, go ahead. We'll crack this open. Got that solid stream of brake fluid. So I think we're in pretty good shape. But just for good measure, I like to do this a few more times, you know, kind of get it consistent to where we get steady, you know, four or five times of just that good fluid coming out. And uh, once that's complete, you know, you obviously do the rest of them and you're good to go. Once you have your system bled um, and it bled properly, obviously everything should be sealed up. But when you're dealing with brakes, it's, uh, you know, it's always good to be more safe than sorry. So not a bad idea to come back, look at all your connections that you made uh, with your brake lines and everything else, and just take a quick peek at them, make sure they're dry and not leaking, uh, just to be on the safe side. And last but not least, once you're all wrapped up, obviously uh, put your tires back on and snug up the nuts, and you wanna torque these down uh, to the proper amount. And when you do that, you wanna torque them in a star pattern, that way they, they will kind of push the wheel on flat and keep it true. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco hydraulic disc brake actuator with the electric reverse lockout.